Welcome to Forever Exile, the Path of Exile podcast. I'm Justin, a.k. Tags. I'm Tyler, Wrecker of Days. Wow, you oh, actually started that episode with a... <gasps> <laughs> no, I didn't. Yes, you, I'll leave it oh, in. I'll show you. Normal, normal people speak is okay. Welcome to Forever I, I Exile, episode laugh. 96. Yes. Oh, God, what? What do you laugh what? at? No, I was going to make fun of you. Go you do it. your intro. Do your gonna, it's episode nope. 96, everybody. It's welcome. Welcome. Now go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Just, for showing Cue up. I love how, so you do... You're the you're the tech guy, so you do all the recording. This podcast wouldn't exist without you. But well, I could I could I could talk in front of a mic, but no one would ever hear it. But um, you you do this like silence thing where you record the background or whatever. But you always do this thing with your hands where you're kind of like I people make sure can't I don't see move. this, but his hands yeah, and his hands are like all frozen, like a little kid, you know, no kind movement. of like elbows bent, but hands kind of at the shoulders. I'm recording the noise floor of both of our recordings. So that's yeah, what yeah. I'm doing. All right. Yeah, I'm just making fun of your hands. My hands are fantastic. Episode 96 is the uh, in Vancouver Canucks world. That's the Pavel Bure episode, man. Mm-hmm. You have to live under a rock. If you are in BC, you may, uh, maybe Canada, if you are in BC and you've never heard of Pavel Bure, you were just born. Exciting Vancouver Canucks hockey player. Ooh, we, yeah. we ignore the New York Rangers days and the Florida Panthers days. We pretend he was only a Canuck. He was kind of only a Canuck. That's why we retired his number. Did we good for us? That was nice of us. Yeah, it was. It was a nice one. He was crying and stuff. Oh, how cute. Mm-hmm. Anyway, big shout out to our Patreons this week and every week. Obviously, you guys are awesome. Thank you for supporting the podcast. And James, welcome to the Patreon crew. If you're curious what our Patreon is, you can find information down below and on our website. It gives you access to After Dark, which is our podcast after the podcast, which is just more POE and stuff talking. Thank you, guys. You're awesome. Except clothing is optional. While recording and while listening. Correct. 100%. We do wear them, but it's optional. Uh, well, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. I'm getting pretty lazy. <laughs> You're going to start <laughs> just gonna seeing walk in like one a day topless. just naked. Like, all right, let's <laughs> yeah, go. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to walk. To, I'm, hang on, Jess. I got to go to the bathroom. You're going to see me walk away. I'm going to have like my holy underwear on. Can't wait. Yeah, for sure. And sorry, patrons, for those that, patrons kind of dumb at the end of the month. Um, not much we can do about it, so we apologize, but for those that sign up at the end of the month, like a few of you just did, you get charged then, then you get charged, they always charge at the first of the month, no matter when you sign up, so not much we can do about it, but just wanted to send our condolences, but also our thanks. It is really annoying that Patreon can't just figure it out like every other subscription service <laughs> in know, the world. Yeah. Patreon, can you count to 30? Yeah. No, no, we can't. Just even a month. Just, just do a month. Literally just do a month. I don't understand what's so hard about it, but anyway, Patreon's stupid. But mm-hmm. the supporters are awesome. How was your week? Yes. Good week. Good week. We're doing another afternoon recording. We're trying to squeeze as much of these in as we can throughout the summer, which is great. Maybe we can do it after school starts again. But uh, so I have my kids, each of my kids, because uh, we're going to do after dark after this. And who knows how long the episodes go. So each kid gets to pick a movie. And uh, so my daughter's movies first, then my son's movie. And I want them to pick ahead of time. So then there's no like coming downstairs tears. But I don't, I don't want this movie. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. The, they they have to they're each picking a movie after lunch that's the movie there's no change in your mind this time changing your mind's okay anytime but not today. not today not now yeah and then so then i message my wife i'm like hey just fyi just a reminder i'm recording so you know don't like get shot or die at work or anything because on my phone's on do not disturb and i'm not going to find out for a while uh so you know anyway but hey dude i got my remember so my ac Right. Uh, it's been broken for a while yep. in retrospect, but I really discovered it maybe a month ago. Hmm. Of course, just before the massive heat wave comes and we're in mid 40 degree weather. Well, I just got it installed by that company. Like, you know how like you're like, oh, hey, and you type in your city name and then it's like AC repairs or whatever it is you need done. Plumber, fa- fence making, whatever. And you... <laughs> That's the worst. Do not disturb. Did you hear that? Oh, yeah. I know. But guess what? <laughs> guess what? It's one person it's is wife. allowed to interrupt my do not disturb. That's awesome. I, be, I bet she it's responded. like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it is. Except it's okay. Okay. She's like, thanks for interrupting That's my amazing. day with that pointless reminder of your stupid recording. <laughs> yeah, while well, well, I'm working. Thank you for letting yeah, no me know. Kidding. <laughs> no kidding. It's Oh, my goodness. The stuff she has to deal with today. So anyway. My AC finally got installed, right? Like we're all, we're used to like, you know, in our area type in, it's like, okay, well, these guys, they, they got 25 star reviews, but then a bunch of no star reviews. And you're like, okay, well, that's not a, like that amount of five star reviews. They, they could have that many family members. Sure. Like it's not legit. Yeah, you but cheat. then you and I found this one company where it was like hundreds, 
compared and and like no negative reviews and we thought it was impossible i decided to wait 100 percent worth it man so we good. got our ac installed it's so quiet mm -hmm. my neighbors won't hate me anymore i don't know why and you look, care about that dude i've got like a crazy fluffy oh my goodness i'm not made for this my slippers are really fluffy and i'm wearing a hoodie and it's like 36 degrees outside or something i don't know it's great what do you set your Love ac it. to inside 25 oh my god I know you're you 18 you're and a half right now <laughs> <laughs> you're, and you're walking around and your nipples aren't even poking out of your shirt. Uh, but those are, bit. those are getting me going. Yeah. But no, so we got our AC installed and it's been wonderful. A few days of actually quiet. Like my wife and I, we would have to turn the AC off when we were watching a show. At oh, night wow. It was okay. Just, so it was uh, loud inside too. Inside and yeah, I felt really bad for the neighbors, but definitely now it's nice. And they redid the whole outside for it. They even changed where the dryer ducting was coming. A whole bunch of stuff. It was great. It was wonderful. And so anyway, I went. And while that was happening, I went to your place, dropped off a few of our Patreon cards to your place. And Hold I on. want to apologize. Patreon what? cards are coming out. Blame Justin. <laughs> the summer took over. I got busy. Two of them I found. I had not. I thought I had sent them out. I have them sitting right here in front of me. But they are coming out this week. They're a couple months late. Our apologies. Cards are coming, stickers are in them, and everybody else is uh, getting theirs from like the last week, two weeks now. Yeah. Those are all done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I want to apologize to everybody that loves our lawn talk. Uh, I mean, for one, this normally would be the weather where we get to talk about it, but the 40 degree weather has just roasted everybody's lawn, so everybody's brown. But I wanted to take a picture of Justin's lawn and then post it on Discord and then just make fun of Justin. Even though his lawn looks like everyone else's, he doesn't want it to look like everyone else's, so I wanted to post I'm it. I'm saving the earth, Ty. I am not using the water, and I'm saving... You could thank me for your children being alive. It's my responsibility. We're at a level one water restriction. You can water your lawn anytime. I know. You'll Honestly, you want to know what it is? I can't find the stupid wireless adapter that hooks up to my hose bed. <laughs> That's what it is. I just haven't had <laughs> time right, to find it. It makes me so angry that I can't find it. I can't water my own lawn. No, I don't want to do it myself. I didn't put a sprinkler oh. system in to do it myself, but I lost the stupid yeah. piece I took out. So anyway, people, I'm sorry I couldn't take a picture of Justin's brown lawn. Maybe I'll do that again this week. Uh, but we have people coming over. So you know how before COVID existed, before it was a thing, every month I'd have people over just once a month. People can come shows always like the first Saturday of the month. Oh, did you show up, right? Oh, I hate you. <laughs> yes. Yes, you did. Justin never came. I did. But so yes, every couple times. sometimes, yes. A couple, yeah, out of the last few years, you've showed up a couple times. Anyway, start in our area, so don't don't be all judgy, people, because I know COVID's still a thing in a lot in a lot of places. But our it's province and our area is really we're just good taking a good handle on it, and the regional restrictions are are allowing this kind of thing. So anyway, people are coming over tomorrow. I, I have some rules, you know, about how vaccinated you are or aren't, and who can come and not. But for the most part, people are coming over tomorrow, and that's going to be kind of weird. Pretty fun, even if it's only a few people. Yeah, so yeah. And one last thing, this is totally unrelated, but I remember a while ago you were, we were laughing at Twitch because they added the hot tub tag Okay. as like the game or the category right. that you were playing. And oh my goodness, is it brutal? Did you watch it? I've, I've actually never looked at them. I assumed it was just girls for the most part chilling in a hot tub. If I could get like just some not pretty dude chilling in a hot tub just talking i'd be on board <laughs> yeah. i would be on yeah, board I, that's right i remember you saying that and i remember when you told me about it so i went and checked it out and it's exactly what you said is it it's okay. a whole bunch of guys that can barely contain themselves watching girls that can barely contain sure. themselves and so anyway but the vancouver aquarium that's here that i'm really glad survived the whole like covid restrictions and lack of funding and all that kind of stuff the vancouver aquarium that's here uh they have a constant Twi uh, Twitch channel that's always on and it's always focused on their otters. It's really cool. And it's really neat because they, they're, they're interactive with it. They zoom in and, you know, they're telling you what's happening and what the names of the otters are and what, you know, the time of day it is and why they're doing stuff. So it's really cool. And they don't ask for subs or anything. They just, you know, nothing like that. It's just informative and educational. But the point of it is they added the hot tub tag to that. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it is. It's so good. So they have a few thousand people watching these otters, but it has the hot tub tag. So it's going to be like bikini girl, bikini girl, otters, bikini girl, bikini girl. If you're searching for the hot tub thing on uh, Twitch. The Vancouver so. Aquarium actually didn't didn't make it through COVID. I, that's what I thought I read. But then all of a sudden they're. So there's a there's a U.S. company that purchased them. And so there's a possibility oh. they may not close. It's just not a for sure thing. 
I would imagine, why would you buy the Vancouver Aquarium and close it? Some entertainment yeah. company in the States that bought it, but that is funny though. That's, I would watch that. Uh, I thought I read that they didn't, and I thought, yeah. Yeah, like a month ago, a month and a half ago or something, they announced that they were going to mm. have to close permanently. Ah, I hope they can stay up. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that was my week. Did you have a week? I did. My week, I played a lot of PoE. I worked, I, coming back from weekend, or from holidays for me is the worst, because it's just trying to get caught up for two weeks, and it's just constantly playing that game. It's never a vacation, because you know you have two weeks of work to do, and yep. then one week you get back. Yep, right. so it, it's just been a lot of catch up, and we have people coming over tomorrow as well. We did a separate games night. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> That would be funny. Though. Uh, <laughs> People can't see this, but I have a very unimpressed. I give Justin uh, a hard time because it's our group of friends. Like Justin yeah. and I are in the same group of friends. Let me just tell you, Ty. And every, he never shows up. Every, I do. I do. Listen, it's a Saturday night and it's quite often that I can't make it just because the week's been busy. So I'm hanging out. I changed it to Saturday for you. I, I know you did. I appreciate <laughs> it. It used to be Fridays. and You're like, oh, Fridays just never work for me. So I changed it to Saturdays. And never show yeah, up. it just doesn't work. But every, almost, <laughs> almost every time you do one, a couple of our friends will send me a text saying, hey, you should do one the same day and then send it out to people. Not for real, uh, but just a joke. <laughs> no, oh, for sure. And everyone will go to yours. You have a way better setup, way better games, way more drinks. When people come over to my place, I give them carrots and water. When they go to your place, <laughs> you have an endless broccoli. supply of booze. Some... Yeah, that's right. You get, you give them an endless supply of booze and candy. <laughs> I'm going to get booze today, actually, for tomorrow. Sweet. No, not I'm... for tomorrow night. Screw you. No, you're not doing anything tomorrow night. We have uh, my busy. daughter's birthday party tomorrow. So we've got uh, a few friends and family coming over. <laughs> What's she and turning? Then four and then Ooh. well she's already four but so, you, birthday. so you'll be up late yeah i can see no, we have one come. one of our friends the friends we went to whistler with they're gonna stay for the evening and hang out for a little bit so i'm hoping to swing by your place but it won't be a a long thing i don't mean to pressure you mm -hmm. but friendship's almost off almost canceled oh i might i didn't know we were back cancel my subscription i actually didn't know we were back on i thought we just did this like once a week and it was like <laughs> <laughs> have to see each other <sighs> uh, awkward. It is awkward. Anyway, my week was great. It was really busy with work. I have had a ton of fun playing PoE, so I'm looking forward to talking about that. Good. Nothing fun. Literally nothing fun. So, all right. Let's get into PoE week. How was yours? See that, people? 13 Good. minutes in. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, I'm doing a Reaper, right? I started off, I want to see how my Bone Zombie guide is doing in the new 315, that, of course, nobody that makes guides or not has played before 315 comes out. So I want to see how that was, but the Reaper was just too too tempting for me. So I originally wanted to do the Reaper and not respec. I just want to throw the Reaper in and then change my gems, right? My Bone Zombie build has, you know, support specters that give frenzy charges. It has a golem. Um I think that's about it for the for the support. You could throw easily throw in uh holy relic if you wanted to. But the Reaper just consumes them. And I don't see anything written down about it, but I think the Reaper consumes the minions with the most life at the time. Because when I was playing with Reaper, Golems, Zombies, and my Spectres, I want to see how often it actually consumes. Do you think it's highest percentage or actual numeric? But like I, I couldn't tell, but there was a constant theme. Like, my Golem was always first to go. Okay. Always. And there was a time where I'm playing and I'm obviously forgetting that I'm keep bringing up the Reaper and I'm like, where am I? Why am I? Why is my stuff? Done? But it was always the Golem that went first. Mm. The Spectres were next uh, and they're high, high life Spectres, right? I have max life put on them. They're the Stygian Silverbacks. They're, they're tanky. And then the zombies, like it was always skeletons that weren't consumed. Oh, interesting. So I, I don't know if there is a pattern, if there is something that they're looking for, if it's just the closest, I don't know. Um, but Reaper strong, like I've, I've, I've essentially respect or rechained, I changed my gem so that I don't have any other, um, minions except for skeletons, which I expect to get consumed. And they're just there to apply maim and feeding frenzy and calling strikes. So they're just there for fun. Uh, but it's so strong even without like my son, he's six. He beat act 10 for me. Not Kativa, not Kitava though. He's, he's not, they're not allowed to play the Kitava level. That's a little bit too gruesome you know like heart coming out exploding that kind of stuff so the, he's not allowed to do the fight but he got me through the whole thing all of act 10 and his hands are so small he can't even right and left click at the same time he basically has to use the mouse with two hands and then he has to choose with his index finger if he's going to left click for skeletons or 
left click to move or right click for skeletons. And he did act 10, no problem. And I'm not over leveled because I've been skipping league content. You made me think of something that is not related to PoE or what you're talking about specifically, but I want to take it back into personal for a second to piss people off that fast forwarded to right now. <laughs> I found out <laughs> this week the F1 drivers use left and right. And it totally makes sense to me not when I thought about it afterwards, but I just always assumed. Oh, that they, that they were they one pedal use, like right, that. Because right, have you yeah. ever tried to brake with your left foot? You'll die. You'll, you'll throw yourself right out through the window. <laughs> like the car is just like, I don't yeah. know. I didn't know it could stop that fast. Yeah, that's right. I was shocked to find out that they use right and left. Anyway. And they're not even legit pedals. Like they don't touch anything. It's an astonishing technology mm -hmm. for how it works. It's like, it's like spacey stuff. It's so oh, I think crazy. it comes down the back, I think. I don't, I don't know, know what it was. It is, but anyway, but... I was very impressed with that. You just made me think of that. All right, back to POE. Resume. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you can add that 30 seconds onto 30 I'm going to re-add that particular part like eight times through the, through the podcast just <laughs> randomly. Because it's just blowing your mind. <laughs> just so you know. But that's how strong it is. Now, maybe it is well-balanced, maybe not. I mean, every skill can get rebalanced 100 times over at, at as, you know, as GG sees fit. I like it. I like seeing when GGG goes through the in the patch notes, you're like, this skill has been respect from this level to this level because it was too strong at the beginning, but not strong enough later in campaign. I, I kind of like that stuff. So who knows whatever I'll happen to Reaper. But at this point, it's so strong. My son could do it with only one left click or one right click at a time. So that was, it was nice. Um, <laughs> so I got, I'm, I'm in maps. I'm doing like tier one or two. I did some mapping with you. Uh, but in terms for me, I only have tier one and tier two maps kicking around. Um, but the very first thing I do every single time I finish campaign, more important than the two free passive points you get at the end, more important than anything is running all the way up to that really awkward square where Helena's hanging out and getting that movement speed craft. I didn't get that. Every single time. Uh, you have to get it. It's the tier three movement speed one. And oh, it's, it's glorious. But I hate Justin. I hate how crafts get unlocked in this game. I'm with They're you. They're so easy to miss. They're so out of place sometimes. Like some of like I forget if it's like the moon orb boss. I forget if it's in the map version or the the, the campaign version, but they're so far into the into the, the room boss sometimes. arena yeah. that sometimes you don't even see it. And but and just the fact that you have to click on them as opposed to them just like, hey, congratulations, you beat this map. This boss. Yeah. Totally. Like that, that, there's the fire boss in Act 6 or something like that, Tukahama, like the actual god. There's the totem. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I played through that boss fight and didn't even notice that that was a crap. It would be nice if it was related to the boss. Right. So it just unlocked, like, hey, you just pop up instead of needing to click on it because you can miss this stuff. Same with going through Delve, you can miss it. So I just wish it would show up. You're willing to put the most annoying giant screen in front of my face when I finish a prophecy? Can't you just put something up that says like, <laughs> are you sure you want to leave? Do you want this craft? Because uh, maybe I don't and that's my choice, but give me that choice. Like, That would be my least favorite of all the fixes. No, make it the whole screen. Just give it, my no, whole give, screen. Well, no, no. <laughs> yes, with a tiny yes or no. That's all I want. Give it to me without needing to be able to miss it. Like, give it to me automatically. Yeah, but it needs weight, Ty. It needs some item weight for you to click something. If you <laughs> insist on me clicking, yes. Yes or no. Like, for example, there was an item that I want to drop. I want to test something out with my filters with Val amulets, talismans. And when I dropped it, it was like, are you sure you want to drop it? It's incubating something. Yeah, same with like, if you do oh. with the skill gem. Enchantment? In oh, skill. Right, right. Yes, yes. And I loved that quality of life feature. That was great. So imagine if you're leaving an area. Are you sure? And it's like, are you sure? Did you click on everything? You should check that mini map. I would love that. That would that, again give it to me automatically. But if Preferably, I'm not allowed to have it that's automatically, right. yeah, agree. So, but anyway, um, got to maps and okay. Hey, when did you get to maps? Uh, once I beat Act Ten. No, oh. shut your face. What day? <laughs> uh, Gosh, well, I, I went hate on you so much. I shoot, I don't know. You got to maps and holiday? No, you no, didn't. No, I said I was on holiday. That's why it took me a yeah, little I'm longer. Not, I, no, no, none of your excuses. I probably beat you. That's the whole point of this. I wrote down the exact minute. Oh, like I when you campaign. beat Act 10? Yeah, when do you finish Keurig's stupid epilogue? I, I don't remember. Sorry, man. I really don't. I don't keep track <sighs> of that. I'll say you beat me, Ty. You beat oh, me. Oh, you don't give me a freebie. I wanted you to say, like, Monday night, like I did I would it. Remember because that. Sunday. At 11.17 a.m. 
I you did it. Campaigns. I love it. <laughs> I did. It was one week, just. I did it in one week. That seems a little long even pushing. for you. Aren't you normally a little bit? But it was there? like, I didn't sacrifice any family time. I didn't say like, no, 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 I can't watch a show. No. Anyway. Well, you beat me. But anyway. I got to it on Sunday at 11, 18 a.m. So congratulations. Oh, I beat you by a minute. Yep. It was that ah. close. Well done. Ah, yeah. I'll pretend that's real. So here's something that's really awesome, though, about this whole meta change. Sure, people have their opinions on all the changes that have happened, but once all that dust settles, like people have, eh, but eventually it becomes the norm and you forget about everything you ever complained about. One thing that is very new for me is a one button player. Now that flasks, though I don't have the currency for it yet, I haven't been playing very much, so that's not a complaint for drop rates yet. But now that I have the opportunity to make certain flasks triggerable, either by a circumstance or when I use a life flask or whatever. For the first time in my life, in seven years of PoE, I'm planning out, okay, which kinds of flasks do I want my burn, bleed, poison, and freeze? Sure. Like I'm actually planning for for five flasks. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's great because the reason I normally, people are like, oh yeah, four flasks, you don't know how to play the effing game, you stupid. That's what they sound like. (laughs) Well, yeah, that's exactly what they sound like. how, How could you sound any different? So anyway. The reason that I did it before was because on the console, there's a smart flask system. And the smart flask system is a button saver. It's a real console friendly QOL. And it's basically, so let's say my LB button is my life flask. If I'm empty and I hit LB, it'll use the next life flask, which is an awesome thing because it's kind of awkward. They have LB left up and right on the D-pad and RB are your five flask buttons. And I remember a long time ago, they were even thinking about having only four flasks. All right. I have no idea where I was, Justin. Thank you so much for the introduction. Half an hour later. But, <laughs> but yeah, no kidding. But this but, is the beauty of not live. This is why it is. We don't do video. <laughs> do you really want to just stare at but, an empty wall of shoes for 30 minutes while Justin has to take a phone call? Maybe I would, but. You have a nice MJ poster in a background of legit shoe fetish. I have. <laughs> drawings of plants versus zombies i love how much uh, of the wall it takes up <laughs> oh yeah no there and it's like you can see a massive evolution of how my kids have learned to draw over the last year yep. on this wall in those three pages yes and <laughs> anyway it does go ahead so but Flasks, but right just a nice reminder to everyone that every single thing in life is way important more important than poe oh, it's so gonna be good for responses later on too. opinions yeah like everything in your life is more important than this game so remember that when you're chit-chatting with people about the game and giving feedback yep anyway first time ever i'm going through the game actually considering all five flasks nice. because before i had four life flasks because it was just so easy, easy sure. with the smart flask system on console to hit lb and no matter how many i've used it's still using one because that smart flask system wouldn't work and i'm not going to hit like lb or left on the D-pad, or up on the D-pad, or right, or RB. My brain just doesn't work like that. So this is really nice because this strategy that I can come up with will work no matter which platform I'm on, which is amazing. The only thing that I was a little bit disappointed with, but I think this is stuff that they're gradually getting to. You know how sometimes you can hit alt on something and it'll give you the description? Mm -hmm. Right. Here I'm saying I'm pushing down on the left analog stick with my hand as I'm saying. Is that equivalent to alt? It is, yeah. So, but you hit Alt and it'll give you a description. I think Cruelty, the Cruelty gem does that. Um, a few other things, like some of the newer stuff, but there's a lot of things still that don't do that. One thing I would love for that to happen on is Beast Crafting. Especially for, specifically for the uh, right. flasks. Yep. Like, you're, ma- like, that's what of I use staunching. primarily use Beast Crafting. Right. Of staunching, of heat, of this. Like, I know it's supposed to mean the opposite. But my brain's like, okay, of heat means it's getting rid of burning. It really means and I something. Know, I know the common sense. Yeah, it is nice to know exactly what you're doing without it forcing you to be like, what is go this? Go to the wiki. I actually have to go out of the game for it. So. Oh, I agree. But I've been really, uh, I've had a great POE week. I didn't mean to talk so long about it. But uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was really cool. I'm enjoying the new experience. Uh, how about you? Tell me about your week, man. POE week. I don't care about the real life stuff. Anymore. I mean, well, we'll we can talk about the F1 pedals again but uh i'm into red maps i've been playing ice trap i'm having a really good time i'm in trade league so and i forgot how well 
cluster jewels can sell. I don't know. Yeah, I don't even I don't, now. I don't like them. I'm not a big fan of them. I don't like planning around them. I sold so many cluster jewels early on and made a ton of currency. So I got, let's see, I'm playing Ice Trap. I got a few of the items that I was hoping to earn up towards. I just didn't expect to get them this quick. So I've got Tinker Skin for the chests and the Slave Drivers for the gloves. And it's fun. It's good. I, it, I love watching stuff freeze. It's probably one of my favorite effects in the game. Besides, there is something really fun about watching like a chaos or a poison or a bleed like slowly just drain something's health away. But freezing stuff has just been one of my favorite things in P- in PoE ever. So Yeah, I'm on board, man. Like that chill, slow, like my favorite skill in the game is temporal chains. I love like negatively impacting the enemy instead of positively impacting me. So yep. I'm on board. And yeah, tell me them tell me before you explode. jump on. What? Yeah. Well, just tell tell me about uh, Tinker Skin and Slave Drivers. What do those do? Uh, so Tinker Skin is you get life and ES recovery anytime your trap gets triggered. Besides other stuff. Oh, like that's you get... changed a lot. I used to use Tinker Skin all the... Okay, okay, go ahead. I don't remember when that changed. And then you get uh, Frenzy Charge, Trap Trigger, Phasing for four seconds when Trap Triggers. They're all just percentages to get, but it makes your survivability really nice. And then Slave Drivers are where you get uh, Endurance Frenzy or Power Charge when it's triggered but your traps also get essentially blood magic so they'll use life instead of mana which makes things a lot easier given that mana is yeah. i mean it's been changed so it's a little bit better but it's just way different before i was a hundred percent counting on in my enduring mana flask to just because i still had what am i using i'm using zealotry and skitterbots so there's not a whole lot of mana left over and yeah, i don't like to be 15 percent left i don't like to be What's the word? I don't want to, I don't want to be, I want to be generous with the traps so much so that I just want to hold down right click. I don't have to think about it after that. I don't want to be like, okay, I placed three clusters and now I got to, so for me, uh, it makes it a whole lot nicer when, cause not only is it costing me life to cast them, but I'm getting life back because of Tinker Skin. So, uh, it, yeah, it works great. And then also you're getting a little bit back from, um, Pyromaniac in the, in the tree. Uh, so, well, you actually get quite a bit back. So I'm into red maps now. I've had a lot of fun actually expanding this Atlas, which I haven't the last number of leagues. I, and I still don't necessarily like it, but it, I've been playing around with different ways of trying to do it and how to do conquerors and what's the best way to try and make the Atlas grow faster. I, I think they did a really good job of slowing this league down, like slowing the game down. I can't actually tell if I like it though. So why well i am uh, you and i've talked about it lots i love the fact that they've slowed the game down and we've always wanted you know i I do like to play a faster build but i enjoy knowing what's happening versus just hold down right click flask your way through a map pick up your loot and move on sure uh that i really really like expedition i really do enjoy it and i love logbooks the problem for expedition i'm finding is when i'm moving through a map i'm already moving a little bit slower just by the nature of damages decrease a little bit, mana is a little bit different, mobs are a little bit different. Expedition is very slow. Like when you do expedition, you're stopping. You're reading, making your decision as to where to place the bombs and then doing them. And sometimes if I'm in a hurry, like one of the things I like about PoE is I can hop on and just do two or three maps before I got to go hit a meeting or before I got to go take off. I sometimes have to just skip the expedition because it's, it's almost a little bit too much of not doing something but it is a ton of fun i really am excited to talk about some of the changes they did with expedition once we get into the patches but it's it's fun i trying to think about flasks when you were talking about flasks i haven't used any of the instilling or enkindling yet because i haven't quite figured out what direction i would want to go they are definitely dropping way more as i progress through the atlas i have lots and now they brought what's, in... what's lots? Lots is 15? Yeah, lots I probably have like 18 or 19 of both. I did one map. I don't know if I messaged you about it. I did one map and got four. Like two of each. No, you didn't. In that's one cool. single map. Now that's obviously you not probably normal. probably messaged your friend that you're actually going to Yeah, see my other real friend. That's probably who you meant. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I think I have close to 20 of each. And I haven't used anything. And I know there's now a new trick, some sort of, I don't know. There's some sort of thing where you can turn instilling into enkindling and vice versa. I just don't know what the recipe is for it. But 
they've at least been pretty good. I do think, God, this might be something that's coming up. I think it was in the patch notes. I know you and I talked about it, but the ability to start forcing what the instilling is going to do, even if it's at a higher cost to me, is so necessary. I just don't like. And they saw it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think yeah, is that, that was part of their explanation. I think that's coming, right? That's not... uh, I forget if it was because it was going to be in the no, craft it's out. window. It's out. Is it? Okay. Should be out. I haven't actually looked to see what uh, what the costs were, but to me that is so much better because when we, you and I were looking at like what can an instilling do, and there's like ten options. I had I had three or four, and I rolled the same roll, seventy five percent of them. I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that, that that's not. I remember super helpful. If I didn't need it the first time, I don't need it the third and fourth time either. So I like that they're doing something to make it a little more deterministic. Even if it is at a higher cost, yes. that to me is fair. Well, they had a good point in their comment there, because normally they just say what's coming, but they actually had a little blurb on why they're doing this for the instilling orb and not the enkindling orb. And you can't really screw yourself when you use an enkindling orb. I guess there's variations that you can get, but... It's just on or off, I think. It's basically it's I thought boosted. so, but my when I was I was trying to I used the enkindling orb first and then I tried to get the mod I wanted and I was I only getting unlucky. two modifiers. I I used about thir fifteen, I think it was. Thirteen or fifteen. Anyway. Um but with the instilling orb, I got screwed. And they brought that up. They said you could actually get they it to a it. point very easily where you just won't use it because it puts you in an awkward spot. So for me, I have bone armor which is a guard an instant guard skill from the necromancer ascendancy and i have that on my left click well i ran out of instilling orbs on my quartz flask and it got stuck on use when you use a guard skill and i'm like well f yeah, yeah it's true <laughs> and i'm not going to get rid of bone armor that's a massive amount of mitigation that a necromancer really does need most of the time so i'm not sacrificing that for the sake of my quartz flask so Good change, but we'll. we'll I like we'll that you can still use later. flasks even once they have instilling on them manually. I yes, like that they didn't just cool, remove that. Yes. So that you could, in an instant, just quickly hit whatever that that utility flask is. Uh, but I, I I actually like it. I I I'm glad they're dropping at the rate they're dropping. I'm glad they're doing something to change the instilling a bit. I haven't, like I said, I haven't used them because I haven't figured out yet what would be the cause that would make me want to use. The diamond flask versus when I want to use a diamond flask. I can't really figure out, you know, there's certainly going to be some utility that probably works better than others for them. But man, I want them to come up with like a 10 to 1 cost of an instilling to put it on life. And it's like at 25% <laughs> use my life flask or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, they, oh, they I can't wait till it works for mana or life. I, I'll, I don't think they will. I don't... Why? There'd be no negative to it. Not. I've been trying to think of that since they came out with the utility only orbs. Not criticizing that that's the state that we're in, but I was trying to think like, there's no. I can't think of a reason why in the future they won't also add them for life and mana flasks. It's just less clicking, and there's a consequence to cast when damage taken. There's a consequence to triggers. It's not optimal. You you're gonna get stuck in circumstances where it's getting used, and you're like, oh that. That wasn't perfect timing. Like, for example, your diamond flask. If you put that on use when the flask is full or use when the duration is done, then there's going to be times when you're into a boss fight and you don't have your crit mana, you don't have your crit flask ready right away because you just emptied it just before you got there. Like I, same thing for life. I would love to see it. I just don't see them doing it. I want to, uh, if you're okay with this, jump up our conversation about the league thoughts to and then do this week in PUE. Yeah, because there is stuff I really want to talk about with regards to the current league 315 and and expedition specifically. Not that we are going to get into patches. You know what, Justin? Team Team Justin, Agreed. it's fine. Let's go it. ahead. Can I just tell you, you and I, there's actually no. not going to be much cuz this is I feel like it's one thing. I feel like I brought it up before and I am going to bring it up every single time that 315 exists and this doesn't get changed. I am getting I'm losing my mind about how much crap I have to click on. It's really killing expedition for me. There's too stuff much stuff you don't to pick care up. About. No, I don't want to pick it up. I do, like I do care about it in the sense that I need the currency to play expedition. Well, but right. it is exhausting to run through an expedition and have to pick up items from like all different corners, wait for a chest to drop them, wait for them to pop up. I can't. And then you add all the other stuff on top of it. It's different than an exalt. It's different than an elk. It's different than a chaos because you get excited for that stuff. You know what you can do with it. Whereas with this content, you're like, yay. 
I'm excited to get it because I need it, but I don't need to hold it. That's what, here's what, here's what I'm struggling with. They make you pick it up and then they say, here's the chest you put it in as soon as you pick it up. And we've talked about this. That's stupid. Just put that shit in that chest and then I don't have to pick it up. And then there was an argument somebody made of, well, it's because it's tradable. That's why you have to pick it up because the currency is tradable. Okay. How about this? Don't make me pick it up, put it into that chest and then let me shift click and pull out of that inventory and I can sell that if I wanted to sell it to somebody else in a trade league. There's still no reason that I should have to actually pick up a billion things, which I'm, I'm just, this, this is going to be a little rant. This is my mini rant. They said, oh, you should never have to pick up more than two items. Holy Jesus. Have you clicked on a smuggler cash? There's like eight <laughs> things yeah, of rogue markers. Yeah. Th that hasn't happened yet. It's ridiculous. It's not two. Yeah. It's like yeah. four or five. I, it just gets frustrating because the argument to me that it's because it's for trade doesn't make sense because you could still put it right into that chest and let me pull it out of the expedition locker later if I wanted to sell it. I shouldn't need to have to click on a billion things. I'd, okay, I'll click the exalts, I'll click the chaos, the alps, whatever. This to me is just unnecessarily annoying and it's killing the expedition experience for me. I'm really, really enjoying it. I really like logbooks. I like 315 in general. But the amount of garbage that you have to click, that's necessary garbage too. It's not like I'm going, well, do I need this rare? Do I need that unique? It's not the same. This is literally something that is being picked up and going right into a chest that I'm standing right beside. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, it's just frustrating. I'm getting tired of clicking stuff. And it's the one thing in this league that's making me go, ah, do I want to do that content? And, and it's really frustrating because I actually really do like the the experience of the expedition in general but the picking up i was so hopeful they would maybe go a different direction but they're not it's not it's it is kind of frustrating because you see okay well what did they do with what's his name einhardt the beast guy yep you have nets and that that's but then they make him do the nets you have harvest now there's seeds now there's no seeds metamorph. like every time they've been adding something metamorph right we've mentioned that the last few episodes already every time they've added something to core it's been with some really good user interface quality of metamorph life stuff. changed mid-league they actually it stopped did. the clicking mid-league yeah which is what gives us hope for this type of stuff but it, it i'm always now i don't know how the decision making works or why they think this is different than those other ones which were even less it seems in terms of what we were picking up why do you have the league doing this when every time you've added it to core, you haven't? Like, why, why is there a separation? Why can't that mentality of why you did it this way for core, why doesn't that get applied to the next league and the next league? Yeah, I don't know. It's very weird to me that they knew they went into a league with 20 new currency types you were going to have to click on and didn't at one point go, eh, maybe, and... I feel like they probably did. And we saw the response to that was like, well, you get to just deposit it right there, which I feel like that was their discussion. And there wasn't that person in the background going, hey, guys, if it's going in there, why don't we just put it in automatically? That's the they part were, that confuses me. They were too me. nervous. That's right. Maybe they, do, maybe, they're, maybe they know they're not allowed to talk with their mouth full and they just had a big bite of their sub just as that conversation was happening. And they're like, mm, mm, mm. and then the meeting leader was like, okay moving on yeah that's the only part that I, I i love the league i love what they're doing with the direction of their changes we're going to talk about some of them which i'm really excited about to talk about because i know some people are going to disagree entirely with me on some of them but the league itself is so much fun i'm just really really tired of clicking it's just it's too much it's just too much i don't mind the normal stuff but this is just you added 20 new things for no reason in my opinion or reasons that didn't have to be item based at all now like you could have made it like hey you've earned what's that thing in heist that you earn with the guy that lets you unlock stuff you can tell i heist a lot there's there's faustus who's the dude that's next to him oh yeah reveals the, yeah the reveals why not make it like reveals sure that's not an item but it's a thing you do it's a currency in a way you unlock but it's just a number that exists and so why can't any of this stuff be Oh, you know it can. They just did it with temple. I can all of a sudden create an item out of a temple, but yet you can't just let it automatically pick up right. all my stuff and then I just pull it out a little bit if I want to trade it away. It just it. I know that there are 
I know there's things they could do to fix it. And in my opinion, I really, really, really hope that they do because <laughs> you're not, you're not introducing leagues with less stuff to pick up. It's never going to happen. That just doesn't make sense. There's always going to be something new in a league, but you have to call it from somewhere. Right now, you run through a logbook. Oh my God. The amount of stuff you have to pick up when you've got essences, you've got rogue markers, you've got normal currency, throwing all the crap from Expedition. It's every single box. You sit there for a second and then it's like, click, 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 click. Move to the next box. All of a sudden, we're going into the Chinese realm. We're paying the 150 bucks for the pickup pet. I would pet. pay anything for a pickup pet right now. <laughs> Literally anything. Now, here's the thing, though. I skipped a lot of league content during campaign because to me, campaign's too long. I want to get to the part of the game that I like, and that's maps. I know maps are just as repetitive of, as campaign, but for whatever reason, I want campaign to be done as soon as possible, even though I'm slow. So I skipped league content, but now I'm mapping, and I'm hearing from everyone else outside of the click, 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 really good things about Expedition. I, too, have been really enjoying the Expedition experience. I enjoy looking around. Um, I enjoy that it's a very merciful experience in terms of how you place it. Oh, shoot, you know, I really shouldn't go for that one. I didn't realize, you know, I can't place my next charge until here. The raid's too small, so I'd like to take it back. As long as you realize before one. you detonate. Of course, but, you know, that's like, if you're going to be impatient, you're going to pay the price of impatience type of thing. And I found that now over time, as I'm paying a little bit more attention to the mods, it really is a metamorph. If you're in a tough position, that's your fault or one of the consequences to your build. There's not really a lot at fault for the league itself. And so I've really been enjoying it. And a lot of the feedback I've been hearing are log books are amazing. The league itself is amazing. So it's cool. It's cool. I'm hoping to experience a lot more of it before uh, the league's out. Who knows what life will bring? I hope I get a few sessions a week in. Um, yeah, really liking it. Now, one thing that I have always, always forget, because I'm not a league player, I'm a standard player, I only play league with you, I forget that V is the league button. And I forget that all the time, because I'm also on console as well, and there's not, I, there is a league shortcut button as well, but like when you're in Alva's areas, when you're doing metamorph and maps, like it's, it's, there's, there's a league button. And did you know that you can click V to make your thing explode? You don't have to be near it. Uh, you can use V to place it, like place where the detonator, where you want the bomb to go. You can also hit shift V to undo. It's, it's awesome. Crazy. It's mind blowing. This is almost as good as curing cancer. Not really, but man, like I always forget about the V. What else? Oh, did you know you can hover over that expedition button and you'll see a whole list of your mods? I found like that out in tab. a log book and it's very necessary. Because you can see very quickly if you effed yourself. I didn't, dis for some reason, my mouse never hovered over that icon before while I was doing all that stuff. I guess I was too into the actual interaction of the game. But uh, I saw someone on Discord mentioning it and I looked into it and I'm like, oh, I like it. I like the list. You it's should good. see how long the list is once you get into logbooks. Logbooks can be modified like maps too, right? So you have the... Yeah, you don't see that when you mouse over it, but yes, they can be. No, but yeah, but that would be in tab if you wanted to, right? Okay. Yep. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really good. Um, I think the only thing that I, but this is kind of more of a general gameplay thing, but I kind of, but I, I guess like I, I really started noticing it again with ritual and with harvest circumstances and sometimes here within these circumstances as well, because you don't know in an expedition if you're going to be getting a rare enemy or not, but I really wish they had more limitation rules like i don't know how coding works but i wish there was a little bit more limitation rules you know like maximum three or four rares in an inst not instance per se as like an entire map but like within a fight you know what i mean or if there was a rare that was off screen but you already had three rares within a certain proximity well it wouldn't aggro because there's there's so much happening and i find a lot of the time the clutter in the game isn't the amount of enemies it's the amount of insane enemies. Like, I'm fine with a fight taking a long time and trying to figure it out, but I need to know what to do about it. And I find that the more rares there are, I'm like, who's got that Herald Lightning Storm thing? Ah, and I, if I have to try and find, like, between six rares that are always moving around and I don't know who to aim for, it's just a guessing game. 
And I did find this a little bit with some of the expeditions. I find it obviously a lot with Ritual and some of the other circumstances I mentioned, but I kind of wish there was written rules. Like, even make those enemies harder, sure, but limit it so that I know what I'm doing. I find, I've been finding in retrospect, it's not the quantity of enemies, it's the quantity of really modified enemies. Yeah. I, I definitely think you're probably in a smaller group of people that would like to see less. I definitely like to see more. One thing I did not realize, though, until I started playing, actually, it was, it was when I started watching other people play, is Expedition has a new mob that holds a shield in front of it and approaches you, and you can't damage it unless you hit it from behind. But it's oh, always no. facing you. And so for me, it was not ready trap, for that. Ice trap? Uh, no problem. I never, I never even knew that they were a thing. My ice trap freezes everything and hits all over the place, so it's dead. I was watching somebody play uh, the new Reeve skill, and they full on would have to like dash to try and stun them. And then I thought it was hilarious. I was like, "Oh, that would make me angry if uh, like yeah. four mobs just can't die because and they're fa they literally turn with you, and it's this massive white shield in front of them." Game's too busy for that. Like Dark Souls, where there's three enemies at once, that, yeah, you can do that. Not in a game where there's hundreds. But in terms of the rare thing, I just think, like, I, I want the game to be hard, but I, I want to know what's going on. And a lot of the times, it's the rares that keep me from knowing what's going on, the quantity of them. That's, that's what I meant. I agree with you 100% with regards to the amount of crap that's happening on the screen. Baron makes me angry more than anything else in this game, because I can't Baron, see... Lightning Square guy? Yeah, I can't see them. His influenced mobs, you yeah. mean? Right, yes. I, His I literally can't mobs see are them, the worst. and it's gotten yeah. way worse now because there's just more happening. Yep. I'd say Veritanias are a second, but it's a distant second. Barons are 100% the worst. Veritanias like, boom, it does damage. Whereas his is like, hey, I'm slowly killing you, and sometimes you're not sure that they've two stacked up. And then the worst to me is gear is there or something that I want to pick up, and I'm literally having to wait for it to dissipate <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I can go and get it. Well, you know who gets me a lot with the Baron guys? The guys that shove their fist in the ground and then lightning shows up from the ground somewhere else? It's, oh, it's man. a lot. I don't, yeah, I know the guys you're talking about. Yeah, when, well, when you couple them with those huge squares that get rid of both your life, energy shield, and mana, I guess that's three things, not both, but, you know, like, I find them really hard, really hard. I find um, the Hunter ones not bad. Hunter and Drox, not bad. Uh, Drox, to me, is just very strong. I'll feel the damage, but I'll know it's coming. I didn't get surprised by it. Whereas with the reason that Barons drives me crazy is because it's always under everything. And there's just a slight outline, but there's just way too much happening. And when you're talking about some rooms that are really small, it, it just, I just, I'm not a big fan of them. But, but my overall opinion so far of 315 and Expedition has been really, really fun. I really like it. Agreed. And I'm excited to talk about this week in PoE and some of the changes they made samesies just samesies why don't you start first off people were following and noticing it was in our discord that's how i found out about it but it became a quite a big thing just within the community there was somebody who i don't know why maybe they were refusing to but they were an unascended what 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 were they unascended what what did they do i forget what class they are what did they do so on they reached level 100 oh without going into an ascendancy in hardcore i think it was what? and in the class list there's gladiator marauder gladiator weird does anybody know why did this person ever say like it was just I, for fun maybe i did i didn't look into it beyond that but it said this the unascended lunatic has hit 100 rank two so maybe it wasn't even hardcore but you know what who cares who cares was that his name why? or is somebody just calling him an unascended I lunatic think, <laughs> I, I think they're just calling it on it but that's awesome. seriously whoever you are Congratulations on not ascending and hitting a hundred, whether it was HC or not. No, I'm ascendancy. never getting past ninety-two. Is my peak. Wow. If I ever hit ninety-three, I'm buying a cake and shoving my face in it. Yeah, like ninety-six is for me, sort of like an average for each league. I can't. I, my favorite would what? be ninety-six. Ninety-six. Yeah. You're. A I would love for this person to eventually like come forward and be like, "You can ascend." <laughs> <laughs> That's like easy mode, man. How did you look at all these amazing notables? How do you guys not hit 100 every league? What an amazing <laughs> note for GGG. Like, shit, maybe we need to show these new guys how to do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be hilarious if they actually didn't know? Yeah. But here's the thing, like, not like it matters, but PUE trade, 
where it shows all the rankings, it only does Ascended. Oh, so they don't make the list. Apparently they were talked to about it and it's just, yeah, like to actually include class along with Ascension would just screw everything up. So they don't even show, which is cool. A bunch of MTX were released this one. I know we breezed through them last time. We'll breeze through them again here, but there's some nice ones. I love the brimmed hat theme. Yep, they do that every every. I, I think yeah, I think it's great that that's like a a nice cool theme they do that they try and make a brimmed hat look like whatever league content it would make it look like. Uh huh. But they were neat. I like them all. And uh, Starfall wings reminded me of the wings. They look exactly like the wings I got by accident from that one supporter pack that I hate. Oh okay. Except now they're the transcendent whatever you want to call the celestial look but they're that weird oh they look better than mine because mine look like wow metal wings they just didn't make any sense right this, i remember this looks the exactly wow like ones. that but they're not mm. metal and the mystery box um soundtrack is out i love that they do that yeah so it's good. so easy to get to you click on your account and you can download it but i absolutely love path of exiles music so much so that <laughs> that Camille, the music guy, GGG, was our first GGG interview ever out of the hundreds of GGG interviews we've done. And um, but like we were just that excited about the music that we we really wanted to make it happen. And so thank you very much, Camille, for coming on when you did. And it's just awesome that you get it for free. Like you can add it. They're giving it to you so you can you can broadcast with it. You can listen to it wherever. It's yeah, they're so really cool. good about their music. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Is there a difference what? between Celestial Nightfall and Transcendence? Because it is very, very minimal. You're asking me? Well, I just wonder. You don't like Celestial. And so then I was laughing to myself, like, maybe he likes Transcendent or Nightfall. Well, let me correct. I not, it's not that I don't like Celestial. It's that I'm bitter towards Celestial. Right, you're just a crabby patty. But they look very uh -huh. similar to me. I just was laughing. It's like, hey, guys, we've got Celestial for this nightfall for this and transcendence for this and i was like mm, okay they look the well, same well <laughs> maybe there's uh, there's probably there some differences. differences like i it's think the very celestial close. was very gold trimmed right for the most yeah, part yeah the nightfall one kind of is too whereas transcendent is more like abstract -y colors spacey they're all spacey though that's what i see when i see them i still like the black hole i have the black hole vortex and the black hole portal that's what i, I really like the just normal non-mystical space look i think they all look great though but i'm still i'm still bitter they came out you were you were curious about lore and how lore people were freaking out when this new calgurin race or nationality showed up in lore and so they came out and i really wanted to read it but i didn't have time before the podcast which is too bad because it would have been fun to talk about so i'm gonna read it i'm gonna read it too and then maybe we'll uh we'll talk about it next episode but here's what we'll talk about next episode let me just sum it up and i haven't even read it Oh, cool. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, though. I Apparently it's brand new. Like, they just came up with it, so they didn't, it didn't exist. They, but they, you know, a good writer or group, group of writers is always going to leave enough holes in a story to be able to add tons of content. But to have holes enough in your story that you can add a completely new race or nationality to the picture is pretty neat. And so then they had to, you know, as I was skimming through it, you know, how it works in a video game is you don't just have a history of people in a story but you have to have items that correspond to it and dialogue and characters like just to have the actual items that need that reference point and theme as well it's pretty cool how how it how, i like how much effort they put into it into their lore and how married it is to the actual content and the weight of items etc even though they designed the game to completely skip lore if you want to. I absolutely love that. I think it's cool. So I'm excited to read it. Sorry I didn't. Patches, most important patch. How does this make it into every episode? I don't get it. Listen, I made a Reddit post for this because I was so impressed with them. Normally, they're a little bit delayed, but with console patches, they'll group patches together and they'll maybe do a patch a week if it's been that busy. Otherwise, maybe once every two weeks. This week alone, consoles had three updates. Now, granted, like these are good updates and they're big updates. They changed how mana works. They've changed a whole bunch of fixes. So they're important updates. But in the past, it's, we still had to wait a while. And it was just not, not like a second fiddle type of thing, but it was just like we need it's to make like sure it works. It's like fourth or fifth maybe, fiddle. <laughs> well, but maybe, it, I don't know how, if it costs or what the infrastructure is with communicating with Sony and Xbox and what it takes to go through those 
application processes per se. I don't know, but we had three updates this week. So now we're up to 315.1, which is awesome. We're only one hotfix behind and it was a really small hotfix. So cool. Pretty exciting for console folks, which is the majority we all know. All right, let's right? get into 315.1. This is yeah, the biggest two patch. awesome patches. Biggest patch and since it's, it's come up. Point one patch yep. makes sense because it was the biggest of the patches so far. Can we agree to ignore the Royale specific stuff? Because I don't care. They had yeah, a lot. It's great. cool. Whatever. Don't care. Yeah, and I think they started a, a just after we started recording. We got a tweet saying that the new Royale weekend has started again. That's, so. It's obviously going well for them because they're continuing going. Does. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really fun. All right, we need to talk about three fifteen one. What? Hang on. You don't want to talk about the the expedition manifesto actually joined the manifesto tab? No, nope, but would you <laughs> go for it? Well, is let's just it? say there is. I think there's someone at GGG that actually listens to us. It it could even be the custodian, and I'm fine with that. They're probably the most powerful person in the company because they hear everything. everything, and they just throw little whispers or little post it notes onto people's desks, and they're like, "Did well, you forget? Did you forget? Yeah, right." The, so anyway, the custodian heard us say that the expedition manifesto wasn't tagged properly and now it's in so bingo big time good job Just big time well well all right go all right go, well, go, so go, listen 315.1 to me it's actually not that there's a ton of change changes there's a lot of fixed bugs most of them i don't care too much about we talked about already in stilling orbs and in kindling orbs having some sort of vendor recipe which i like that they didn't oh. tell people you got to figure it out i don't even know what it is yet i assume people oh, have right. figured it out but it's not a one-to-one -one. there's something else well, yeah, trade. it'll cost a bunch, but it'll be in your crafting bench, which is cool. No, no, but no. they haven't no. told you how to unlock it for your crafting bench. Converting. Oh, you're talking about trading. Oh, oh like in a kindling. vendor trading, what right. it is. Right, right, right. Uh, it's I, already on the wiki. Yeah. Is it already up? Okay. So I, I don't know. I don't actually know what it is. I think in general, I want to talk more about some of the changes they made fundamentally to the game versus these specific bug fixes. So was there anything in here sure. in this one that stood out to you with regards to like actual patchy type stuff? three things were very big from a player's perspective. Like for me, I totally get when things get really easy from a company, but as a fan, I don't care about that. I'm glad if they can make it easy for them, but I care more about the end product for me. And I know that sounds selfish, but that's kind of what a video game's all about. For me, one of the big ones was completing a Heart of the Grove harvest encounter for the first time unlocks five extra horde crafting station crafting slots for everyone if they lived so I'm, I'm thinking like from a party perspective, if you were there from both at the start of the fight and at the end, everybody unlocks those extra horde crafting station slots instead of just the instance. Oh, I didn't know it was just the instance before. That is pretty, that's a good change. I didn't know either, but that's like, that's a big fight. That's a lot to get to. And even if you're just invited for the fight, you got to live it. You got to make, and it's a big deal to get through it. Even if you're getting carried, now you get rewarded for the live. I like that. So yeah, that's good. You could also sell those slots if you wanted to as well, yeah, which is kind of nice. What a great addition. I like that. What a great addition. Uh, I want you to finish the things you want, because then I want to get into the fundamental stuff. You're, you're going to have another rant. All nope. right. Uh, Rave, Maven's memory game no longer restarts upon re-entering the re arena if you died. Now, I mean, I never die, so that'll obviously never apply to me. I have also never done the fight, but that's awesome, because the memory game is probably the dumbest part. I've never even done it. Just watching it makes I, me angry. I go play Divinity for stupid puzzles, and there's a reason I don't play Divinity a lot. So the fact that I don't have to redo the most annoying part of the fight would be nice. So I like that. Oh, I don't even think I finished it. Let me read it. Go ahead. Maven's memory game no longer restarts upon re-entering the arena if you died and left the arena during it. So if you, like, use another portal. Uh, this one I absolutely loved. We already talked about it, but I'm going to say it anyway added a vendor recipe for converting and stilling orbs to enkindling orbs you'll need to discover the recipes yourself but they're not hard to work out they're also adding instilling orbs to your crafting bench which is awesome oh my goodness to actually say this is the craft i want yep have, have, do, do you know what the cost is yet for that i didn't actually look it up and i don't really care i, I just... honestly i no, i don't because like everything in the game, it needs an investment. You need to be sure. Should be high. I'm fine with whatever like the cost is. four of them is. or something. I'm totally fine. If you can... Sure. Ten. Okay. Then I'll be picky. And I'm going to be really sure. But man, I love that I can be determined with that. Totally. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. Okay, so um, can we talk about some of the... But to me, it's fundamental changes. There's There were a couple changes made to some skills. There were changes made to Expedition. 
I think those are really the two big ones that stand out to me is that they made some skill changes to actual skills and then they did make some changes to expedition. And I think where it becomes a talking point is because you don't you don't often see it happen with GGG mid league. Well, we're not mid league. We're like Jesus, we're like 2-3 weeks into the league. So we're po- post first launch. Third. Yeah, post launch exactly. You don't often see it. So let's start with skill gem changes. They made a couple changes to I mean really specific skills you know like we're talking alternate quality versions of skills that they made changes to this is the part i'm not a big fan of i i don't i don't really i i am told you justin rant no it's not a rant i'm fine with if you did something and you released it that way and people found out and built around it as long as it's not game breaking then you just leave it for the league because i don't think it's a great idea to kind you know what here's the thing GGG could make every change they wanted to and F up every th- single skill they wanted to if they would give me an alternate way to play endgame without going through the axe again. The idea that I went through all the axe, I'm now playing in maps, I put currency into a build, and you do something that in some cases could quite drastically change the skill I'm trying to use because you realized it wasn't doing it the way you... I, I don't even know if it's that you... It, maybe it was too powerful. I don't really know why they made some of the changes they every made. Every skill would have a different reason, sure. but. It's a little rough to do that to me after a launch, unless you're talking like back when we were in the aura stacking and it was causing, I mean, I don't remember, I, to be honest, I don't actually remember what our opinion was of it. I think we were kind of fine back then when they made those changes. We didn't know a whole lot to about them, it. it was, to them, it was game breaking. Right. And they had a big apology about it saying that it's just not, it, it's. It wasn't the intent that it was supposed to be the strong. There was an oversight. We're really sorry, but we do have to change it. Yeah, and I can't say for sure. It's Divergent Flamethrower Trap and Phantasmal Seismic Trap that were changed. I honestly don't know how big of a how big of a change is that to go from increase increased cast speed to increased traps throwing speed or from reduced cast speed to reduced wave frequency. I just find it weird that they would make a change like that post launch unless it was game breaking and this is the first i've heard of those two skills as something that needed to be changed it's funny that you're bringing up mid or post launch mid league or post launch changes because i have a note about that as well and i didn't know that's what you wanted to get into oh i sorry what go for it no 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 so we're on the same page with the last thing that i want to talk about for this week in poe uh there was also they changed role chances roll chances for a lot of the league items that can draw and so that was the other part of it like i i had mentioned that there was changes to skills and then they made changes to the league and yes you're right and i let's talk about those i'm actually to me it's the same conversation oh it, it's the same mentality oh it's not like to me you're willing to make so why don't you go then you well, bring it up because what well i get why you make a change like it it makes sense for whatever the reason is Right. We remember with cluster jewels, it was it was groundbreaking. It was game breaking. They really cut it down. They made some big changes. It did come with screwing over a lot of people's investments, but it came with a massive apology. But to me, I wish they had a more thorough way of getting the game to the state they want before launch. To me, if you screwed up with something, yes, you make bug fixes, but you don't make mechanic changes until the next leak. Now, with, there's one exception here. How Path of Exile works in a league state, and they need a lot of customer feedback and statistics from involvement to see if something is going to stay long-term or short-term. Therefore, if it's going core, or if they're cutting dry from it after the league is done. So there's some things in the Path of Exile world where, yes, okay, if they need to change, let's say, the drop chance of some league items, okay, then... Like they're looking for more information and they need more people to interact with it. Maybe that's something that uh, benefits us in the long road. But outside, and I, I don't even like that. To me, I think you need to get your numbers straight before the league launch. Because if this is something you really want to know information about, put it on the generous side, not the stingy side, right? Make sure you have your numbers as opposed to too little. But when this is a game that requires so much investment, not just in game. We all play this game just as long outside of the game as we do inside the game. Whether it's in path of building, whether it's thinking about builds, and when you change something mid-launch, you're screwing over a lot of people, but it also doesn't make you reliable. And so hopefully this is now I don't remember them doing this very often. 
I I hate mid league changes. I don't mind league, mid league fixes, but I hate mid league changes. And to me, whether it is for league or for gems or for items, I'm more of the fan of, hey, listen, this isn't working out the way we wanted. We're this we're thinking of changing this. So for anything going forward in three sixteen, this is the mentality going forward. So get in your good times now. Okay, so I'm with you on skill gems, a hundred percent, unless it's breaking the game. I think in the, the, these two cases where they change people's, you know, that they may have been using, I don't understand it and I'm not totally for it, but I, uh, I'm literally 100% on the opposite side for what they did with regards to the unique roles, because uh, you haven't played a lot of the expedition, but Gwenin, who is the one particular change that they made was useless. It was literally everybody was just either dumping her currency or trading her currency for two gens or literally anyone but hers because hers is hey here's a chance here's the item you're rolling a chance on and you're getting an item and it was the least used currency it was the most traded currency people didn't like it what the the, the only thing that they did was they said hey now when you gamble with her you have we've added the chance to get rare unique items from her which means you could get a HUD headhunter you couldn't before you could do it now i don't see that even remotely negative except to the people who want to turn it into something to complain about it has no negative effect on anybody who does have a negative effect on the person who traded the currency for something else well you traded it for something else to trade for something else that doesn't mean going forward yeah, but they did it because of what the reward was at the time right and so they could have adding it they how does that wreck anything up. well now they're without if they knew they could have had a headhunter they could have saved it yeah but they could have spammed it before again, again though you're, you're changing looking for their something experience to complain just about. like somebody else no i feel like yeah you are that in my opinion i'm not saying i'm right and you're wrong but i'm saying they've added something for you to potentially get or chase and while you continue to play you will now get more currency because hers is the highest dropping currency for items to be able to re-roll her window you're going to get more now you have a chance to go and do it. This didn't wreck anything. It just meant that you were using the currency for something else. And in fact, you were probably getting something more. You were probably getting something better anyway, because you're not playing chance with an item. You could roll that thing over and over and over, and you're going to see a leather belt like one in eight times. And then you're going to roll a chance on the leather belt and probably never, ever see a headhunter. So that to me, them adding the chance for rare uniques yeah, I'm sure they could have done this before. It would have been nice for them to have done it before, but to just not do it to me doesn't make sense. I don't see that as a negative to add it into the game. We're on the same page with league stuff because I said I get why you make league changes. I just don't think you should, and I think all that stuff needs to be part of the consideration. You would rather them not do this. You would rather them not no. add it. No, that's not what I said. I, I said you just said that. You I would get. I said, I get why they make these league changes, but, you don't like but them. I don't get why I don't know. Well, no, I don't think you should, but I don't think you should be putting yourself in that position. There's a lot to consider before every league. So it's the, this is one of those things that should be part of the pre league thing. Right. You know what I mean? Like the process of going through it. So like I said, I get why they make the changes for some of the league drop stuff. I get that. But like even when they were adding bosses after heist, whatever the reason is, like there's just content needs to be the thought out before the league launch. Yeah, that's all. And so there's stuff I understand why they're adding it. I just wish there wasn't. I wish they didn't. How how am I trying to word this? I wish that they didn't add stuff because to me, in my mind, this is if you make the time for it. It can be thought out ahead of time. It's not something that had to happen if you'd made the time for it, I guess is what I'm saying. Okay. So they added more of Gwenin's currency that can re-roll. Well, that was just natural. They even said that it was at a higher percentage to drop. But they also were very obviously hearing and seeing that people were not using her, her currency. They were trading up to 2Gen, not even ROGs. It was like 2Gen and uh, the other guys. Currencies is what everybody was trading up to to use if you go oh hey they're not using that maybe we just missed it i think the assumption that they should be able to hit every and i know i 100 know this is not what you're saying i'm just going to throw words into your mouth just a little bit sure sure 
they're never going to get everything perfect at a league launch. And especially when it comes to the amount of stuff happening in Path of Exile, this change to me wasn't something so drastic that it was like, wow, they really missed the mark. This to me was them missing it by a little bit and realizing maybe we should make the rewards a little bit better from her to make people feel a little bit more likely to sh maybe I should try her out versus just trading to a different one. That was that was how I read it. I feel like people took it really far in saying that it somehow ruined their league. Okay, yeah, yeah, that yeah. That was yeah, where definitely. my argument was like, oh, this didn't ruin anything. You still played. You still traded your stuff up. You did more with Tujen. You got currency through him. All they're doing now is saying, maybe you don't need to trade up. Maybe you should hold on to that and try for it. And I, that was my only argument with it was that it to me was a good change. Would have been really nice to see it in the very beginning that, hey, there was a chance to get it. Uh, but I just didn't read it and and see this change as something that was potentially ruining a league for somebody unless you were just the type that wanted to be dramatic and be like, well, wait, a you know what I mean? Like you were probably already pissed off with GGG if this change bothered you, because this change to me is kind of beneficial long term, at least. You're you're right. The I think where maybe some of the people that already had a chip on their shoulder would have an argument is this isn't the only game change they're making post-launch do you mean with regards to the skill changes well they change skills so people are seeing a build change mid-league and this so i can totally see yeah and agreed this is a very minor thing that we were just discussing about in terms of the currency change but having and oh i love the crafting recipe additions and all that kind of stuff and i guess you could throw that into the negative side of things too oh well i already re-rolled all this no we stole my currency and i'm i guess i can see where they're coming from but at least they added it now, and I'd rather have it now than in 360. Especially so do, to me if I do it's appreciate not that. build breaking. I am, I right, like, like, like your um, alternate right. quality. That gems one is weird stuff, to me right. unless they're breaking the game. And I can understand somebody being frustrated if they put work and effort into a build, uh, and you don't see it almost ever with grinding your games. No. They very, very rarely will change a skill post launch. Which yeah. I do appreciate. So I'm curious to the severity of it. I hope it wasn't apathetic. I hope I hope there's a really good reason for it. Because even going back to last week, all those mana changes mid-league is crazy. Now, at the very beginning of the league, so I guess if you have to do it, giving people like the majority of the league with that change as opposed to halfway. I have appreciated the mana changes as I've gotten further in, but I am very oh, curious still, like we talked about last week. Uh, it would have been interesting to see like if if the community hadn't lost their minds and blown up <laughs> would they still have made those changes probably not so i'm curious what it would have been like had that not happened so i this one to me th first off also the gwenin change for the gambling it was a hot fix that came in as 3151 hot fix it wasn't at the same time as the right yeah. as the skill changes i just feel like if you read that and got angry you probably were already pissy you probably already had a bit of a negative feeling towards the league, which people t certainly can. This league has been very polarizing with regards to how they rolled it out and the changes that they made. But I did not read that as a negative at all. I was like, oh, cool. Now going forward, yeah. I might be able to get something. But anyway, sure. that was the big thing for me for their patches. I was quite happy with them minus the skill changes. They don't affect me. I just don't like them adjusting a skill. <laughs> I don't like them adjusting a skill unless it's beneficial to me. Then I'll be fine. With it. <laughs> well, if they changed Ice Trap, that'd be a big it, deal. Yeah, and that's what I mean. If they changed, and Reapers changed three times. Granted, it's a new skill, and that's kind of what you get when you're trying a new skill. But what if they did that to zombies? What if I spent all this time trying to get into Heist, and I was looking for a specific kind of alternate quality for my zombies, and then it got changed? I feel like, again, I don't know them well enough, but to read Divergent Flamethrower Trap no longer gives 0 to 20% increased cast speed, now gives 0 to 20% increased trap throwing speed, is that, I, I actually don't know, did you, is that good? Yeah. Is that bad? I, I don't actually know. Could it, could have that waited for 360? Right, and that's was what I mean. Did now? it break? Like, was somebody like, do, oh my God, look at them. I'm, <laughs> who's clearing the game on flamethrower trap? Like, no, oh, this is easy because of cast speed. I just. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, that was my thoughts. Yep. Nothing wrong with waiting a league. And we were talk, kind of talking about that with all the mana changes. And Art of War on our Discord, one of our followers, uh, brought up a really good point. Now, again, it doesn't really change the mentality of doing like pre-league versus post-league changes. But 
Art of War was say, brought up a perspective that I hadn't considered and that they'd already had two sets of numbers. So Art of War's theory is that maybe they had two sets of numbers ready when in regards mana to like changes. Mana okay, changes. Sure. Yeah. So they had the aggressive ones and then they still had the changes, right? Because they were going to be changing mana costs, mana multipliers on supports no matter what. But they had a very aggressive set of numbers and then they had a less aggressive set of numbers in regards to the changes. And I And they did explain a lot of their numbers going forward and they were quoting Chris of saying we didn't have all of our numbers completely set yet so Art of War was saying maybe they decided to release the aggressive set of numbers see what people thought see how people played with it get our stats back and then they had a backup set right away so maybe those numbers weren't random and they didn't go crazy and it wasn't just about the reddit reaction but it was you know we're prepared for a change if it's very negative in the game both opinion-wise, but also statistically. And I'm sure there were some stats that they maybe need to get. So Art of War really brought me down to earth because I was pretty animated about the changes. I didn't like the fact that we didn't have to go all league with it. GGG already, of course, as we like to say, knows better. And so Art of War was saying, you know what? They probably had a backup plan. It's a good theory. And it was ready to go pre-league. I feel like if that is true, that it was a very poor decision to take the aggress like if you had the two numbers why not roll out the, the the lower of the two and then wait two or three leagues to roll out that final one versus like slam it down because they were really heavy-handed on the changes for 315 why not if there was if that was the idea like because we talked about the fact that why is chris saying that we didn't have the numbers the day before we released it that doesn't really make sense uh but if that is true I feel like hopefully next time they're like, let's go the lighter approach because we want to get to here. <laughs> this is where we want to get long term. It's going to be really hard for them to do that now, right? They started up high. They dropped it down. It's going to be really hard if they actually wanted to be up at those high numbers eventually versus if you rolled it out and you were like, hey, guys, tiny nerf, but you'll be fine. And then in two or three leagues later, when maybe there's other things that have come hey into guys, the game too. tiny nerf. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Good idea, yeah, though. Yeah, I don't know. I can see pros and cons on both sides. Uh, it's still two days. Two days is really fast to make that uh, change. I, I didn't like it. Although I'm appreciating it because there was a, a struggle for me to make mana work, but it wasn't for you very long. You can now four link a herald, so that's nice. I don't remember what brought this up. I'm talking about new players here. Mm -hmm. Now your brother's been playing PoE, and every time he's been logging on to broadcast, he's still playing PoE, and I love Completely it. Completely blind, it. too. He's finishing Act 10. I think he wanted to finish Act 10 last night. And I'm, I'm really liking the blind approach. And I think GGG's or Path of Exile's best experience is playing blind. Like Path of Exile is not for everybody. And anyone who makes a game knows you're not trying to make your game for anybody. Anytime you try and make it for everyone, you're going to fail. You pick the style of player or mentality, whatever, like a theory crafter, right? And every time I, I play this game blindly, I'm reminded at how much, like there's still a lot of QOL missing. There's lots of information that should be in the game that isn't. But I still forget how much is in the game that we take for granted or we forget about when we start complaining about a new player coming into the game. And so there was a Reddit post that somebody meant that uh, I responded on. They're like, I've had a lot of failed builds. You know, I'm kind of discouraged. How do you go about, do you like pre-planning or do you like going blind? And I wrote, you know, ironically, though I'm a guide writer, I love the blind approach. I, I love pre-planning, but I find that as soon as I started my blind approach, I've learned so much more about the game. I've learned more about crafts. I've learned more about where things are unlocked. I've appreciated my items more because I don't need that item. I'm hoping for that item. And wow, it took me so long to get that, or I can't believe it dropped so early, you know. So many different things about the game. And so, and, but I've learned about what quests give what, you know, but just naturally. And then you realize, holy smokes, I get 24 regrets or whatever it is at the end. Like, I have plenty of space for mistakes. And oh my goodness, all of a sudden, like I'm, I don't know, I'm in T7 maps now. And it's like, wow, I have 30 regrets already. Like, I got plenty of space to change my mind. So, do you think the game is at a state where you and I can wing the game? Sure. And we still will benefit greatly from it. We'll still learn new things, even though we have thousands of hours into the game. Do you think the game is ready for a new player like your brother to wing it? Now, you're, you're, your brother's smart. Like, he gets these games. But do you think the game can be played by a new player and wing it? All right. Well, he's not smart at all. And he's got the benefit. 
of when <laughs> he's stuff not comes gonna up, listen to this he i'll clip care. this part uh he he will he'll reach out with questions i my honest opinion is no but i also don't want path of exile to ever be at a point where an, uh, a new player just comes in and just completely wings it my personal opinion is if you are brand new to the game play a build not necessarily for multiple leagues, but maybe even in one league, play one or two builds, or over a couple leagues, play two, three, four builds. I think the reason, though, is... You're talking guides? Guides, yeah. So somebody's idea, somebody's direction, somebody's helping you walk your way through it, and then try and play it as a new player. I think if you had gone in, like you talk about you've learned so much playing blind as you try them now, you have to remember... You play, you granted you built the builds, but you played those builds so many times that you kind of start to get an understanding of how does the game work? What are the mechanics that when you go in blind after that, you have something to compare it to versus if you go in like for Nathan, for example, I think most people can get to the end of act 10 blind. I don't think it's going to, it certainly isn't going to be anything special. He has nothing special. There's nothing special about him at all. Like at all, <laughs> anybody can do it. But I think there is if, nothing I like about no, nothing special. But I think if you were to try and take a build without any understanding of the game mechanics into later game, getting into yellow, red maps, end game bosses, I think that's where people would struggle a little bit. And but I'm I'm kind of okay with that. Yeah, I I think the game falls short in letting players know important information. Um, I don't think it's falling short in the complexity of the tree. I really hope that doesn't change for Path of Exile 2. I don't think there's anything failing in regards to the gem setup, though I think there's a lot of information missing. Like they they added, you know, those green check, check marks or red yep. X's, but it still doesn't include a lot of mechanics. It goes with basic tags and that's it. I would love to see where there was the option to, similar to POB, where if you moused over it or alted over it or something, maybe you could see a percentage that you could compare multiple supports if they were tagged with this to know like what you're... But even still, though, the game is so complex that that's not always going to give you an answer, especially as they've moved more towards wanting to, you to use utility stuff. It, it's, it, I just feel like it's a really hard game and always should be a hard game to just completely wing if you don't understand the game. I, I agree. I just... See, for me... I think you're right. They should follow a guide. If you're new, this game should really be overwhelming if you want to wing it. And it would be impressive if you were slightly successful winging it without a guide. The problem for me, and this isn't a criticism to what you're saying, I just think more needs to be done on it, is how is a new, per how is a new person supposed to go on the guide form and know totally. a good guide 100%. versus a not good guide? And so it, even if you have opinions, like that might not be my game style. What if I don't want to hit a thousand buttons? What if I don't want the, you know what I mean? Like, what if I don't want to have to spend six X to make this build function? So GGG needs to have that. Hey, you're a new player. Well, let's Chinese give you a, a mediocre version of what you can do. Right. But have it so that, you know, like one or two and, and make it really basic. Like this is your melee strong guy. This is your bow and arrow green guy. This is your spell caster. You know, completely exclude minions, whatever it is, but have it so that they can have a reliable source that they know they're getting a decent education from. Um, and but I think the other thing is that, like for example, your brother is doing a fire arrow build, but he wants to do all dot damage, so he's added poison to fire arrow. Well, there is an added chaos damage that will work, but the poison chance isn't going to work. Because you have to do physical damage for poison to work, but the game doesn't, doesn't say that. that anywhere. But how is he ever supposed to know? Like I go back to an episode or two ago where I was talking about the good old days and the zombies have a spell tag. Minions have a spell tag. So if I'm increasing my spell damage, that should, in my new brain, mean I'm also increase I'm increasing the damage of this gem. So there's a lot that's missing. Um and it, I, maybe this triggered from that Reddit post. Maybe it triggered when I saw that Nathan was using the poison chance. I forget what it's called now because they changed a couple of those poison gems, but a gem that adds. And I'm curious, like because that gem adds chaos damage, but it also has a poison chance, it probably had a green check mark on it when Nathan's like, oh, this will work with my build. But it doesn't. And there, because there's multiple stages for every skill, like you look at Caustic Arrow, it hits technically 
but nobody cares about the hit because it's just going to have a dot wherever you click anyway and accuracy is pointless with it. But so many of the green check marks or red X's, because it's a multi-stage skill per se, there's going to be a lot of irrelevance in terms of what the game says is okay and not. So I think the struggle with Path of Exile is you learn more the longer you play. And if you're not handheld through the first bit to get you into maps, I don't think you actually learned much through those first 10 acts. You're usually just like Mickey mousing what you find. Whereas you get to the end game, now you're actually starting to fine tune, figure out what works, what can drop, what, I mean, everything's brand new once you get to the end game. So I, my personal opinion is I think people should typically follow guides unless you have a really good understanding of the game and then wing it because you're right. If you like, even for me, if I went into a league and had no prep, no thinking, there's no way I get to act 10 and into maps and into the end game and haven't figured out something new. There's no way there's way too much that the game has. Yeah, I agree. I just think, and I'm 100% on board. I just think the game needs to include not how to be successful, but basic mechanics. Base builds for sure. I still think that would be so good. Like what they do in the Chinese realm, give people like three archetypes and learn them, play them, and then also give them a full respec at maps or something that lets you kind of now build it how you want to build it, but you've gotten a bit of an understanding of how the game works. Agreed. That, that You know what? That'd be kind of actually neat. Like I deal with free respecs all the time because I play in standard. Um, but it would be kind of neat. So what, how standards respec system works is I get a free respec every league, even if the tree hasn't changed yeah, they at didn't all. do that before. But no, and I love that they have it because, but if I make one change to the tree, options, poof and gone. So, but it would be cool if they had like, so they have ascendancy point, they have passives available, respec points available. It would be cool if there was like free respec thing that could just sit there. And then you would get like one free respec for your character once you finish the campaign or something. But it you could just use it whenever you wanted. I think that'd be cool. I mean, imagine that for like people that are trying out CI but have never done it before. That'd be great. Level with life. Bloop. Wipe it clean once you start maps and once you've saved up for your gear. It'd be kind of fun. I don't know how they would ever do this, but give you like a, a one map run. So you can make your build, set up your tree how you want, and you got one map. And at the end of that map, you either choose this is permanent or that, you know what, that didn't work. I'm just going to adjust it a bit. That's <laughs> pretty hardcore. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, let's wrap this up. Thank you guys for joining us. Episode 96, Forever XL, the Path of XL podcast. I'm Justin, a.k.a. Tags. I'm Tyler, a.k.a. not t- Record of Days. Record of Days, that's me. Thank you guys for joining us. We will catch you in episode 97 next week. And our patrons will see you guys in After Dark. If you're looking for more information, you'll find it down below our website, foreverxl.com. or on Twitter, foreverxl 82 We have Discord. Come in and say hi. And all of our Patreon and support information is down below. Bye. Oh, man. Remember the guy making fun of us on Reddit for our link order? That's that's coming up. In after, that's coming up next. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>